Okay, uh, let's uh, introduce uh, the short time uh, uh, Fourier transform. Uh, consider a signal uh, x of t, a continuous signal. And uh, we already know that uh, the correspondent Fourier transform, x of omega, is given by, uh, even denoted with this symbol, is given by the integral between minus infinity and infinity of uh, x of t, e to the minus j omega t in delta t. And this is the Fourier transform. The integration in time is done over the entire uh, real axis. Uh, instead, uh, when we talk about the short time Fourier transform, we fix a time tau and we consider a, a window shifted at tau, so it's going to be w of t minus tau. And uh, uh, for simplicity, no, we will assume that uh, omega t is uh, symmetric. Just you not know, to make things easier, and um, even from from a practical pros perspective. And then you know we by doing this, you know we consider the, the sampled signal x at of t, uh, equ uh, which now also depends upon tau. given by the product of x of t times the, the shifted window. So we simply extract you know, par parts of this, uh, just a, a time segment, segment, which also can get smoothed out you know, depend, uh, depending upon the shape of uh, w. And uh, then we define the, the short time Fourier transform of uh, x of t as uh, the Fourier transform of uh, the signal, the sample signal. Okay, so we have that uh, x uh, short, which will be a function of omega and tau, is equal to the Fourier transform of uh, x of t times w of t minus tau. And, uh, or, you know, if we write as an integral, we have the integral between minus infinity and infinity of x of t, uh, w t minus tau, e to the minus j omega t in delta t. And uh, this is the, the definition of uh, the short time uh, Fourier transform. Now, uh, an important quantity here will be the width of uh, the window, which now we're going to, uh, you know, uh, we need to discuss about it and understand what is the effect of, uh, of that. Because, of course, you know, we, and to do that, you know, let's uh, consider um, a simple case. And then you know we can generalize it you know and try to make uh, some some important conclusions about the property of uh, the short time Fourier transform. But now, now for example, let, let's do an example and uh, let's consider uh, the signal. Let's do the short time Fourier transform of uh, uh, the signal x of t equal cosine of uh, omega naught t. And of course, we know that this can be written as 1 half e to the j omega naught t plus 1 half e to the min minus j omega naught t. And so what we got to do now, we will simply first do the Fourier transform, uh, the short time Fourier transform of uh, this signal, and then we can uh, compute you know, the, the one for the, the cosine. And... Uh, and that's uh, so. What? How we do? How we do that? Basically. So this is our signal, which is 
uh, is going to have uh, a period. Uh, is a periodic function of amplitude one with the maximum amplitude to be one. So. And so on. And now we, we define a window. For example, let's, uh, let's assume, OK, the, the period here is uh, t0 equal 2 pi divided by omega0. OK? Now let's assume that, you know, here as a simple case, you know, I take the, the tau variable, the handle to move the window around the t-axis. The I'm going to assume a simple rectangular window. OK? which also have an amplitude 1. This is my window. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to assume that the width of this window is uh, T sub S. So this is uh, tau plus T S divided by 2. And this is tau minus T S divided by 2. So basically, you know, the window that we consider is the, is the following. Wt equal uh, yeah okay is the box function so Wt equal uh, u the step function t plus t s divided by two minus u t minus t s divided by two and now we would like to understand you know what is the effect of the width of this uh, window. On you know on the on the short time Fourier transform, how does this uh, the short time Fourier transform depend upon uh, T S? And uh, now um, let's first um, remember the definition of uh, the the short time Fourier transform. This is the Fourier transform of uh, x of t times w of uh, t minus tau. Okay. And uh, our signal is given by this. So in this way, if I start a new page, so we have uh, xx of uh, omega tau equal to the Fourier transform of, uh, OK, let me redo all the steps. So we can, uh, this is equal to what? This is equal to the we have a cosine signal. I apply the Euler formula, and this is equal to the Fourier transform of one half e to the j omega naught t plus one half e to the minus j omega naught t times w t minus tau. And now, actually, you know, before going um, before going into the, into the details of the, the calculation, we can first uh, simplify this expression by applying the, Fourier, the property of the Fourier transform. First, I can apply the linearity. And this is equal to 1 half the Fourier transform of uh, e to the j omega naught t times w t minus tau plus one half Fourier transform of e to the minus j mega naught t w t minus tau. OK? This is just a linearity. And, uh, and now, because of this particular choice, uh, I remind you that the original signal was uh, is cosine of omega t, that we are trying to, we're trying to compute the S TFT of this, uh, of this signal. So now, no, here you can see I I have uh, the I can apply the the modulation property. I can apply the time shift property to compute this Fourier transform, the Fourier transform of this signal, and the modulation property. But in particular, no, I, I first apply the modulation property, and this tells me that uh, 
the, uh, the Fourier transform of a signal W modulated by uh, um, a complex exponential is equal to what? To the Fourier transform of uh, the signal, which is in this case is the window, computed at omega minus omega naught. And then I can do the same things here. I have one half the Fourier transform of the shifted window computed now this time at omega plus omega naught. Now, if we call, if, it, if WT is the window, we define with capital W of omega is uh, Fourier transform. Then I can uh, compute this, uh, this Fourier transform easily, because I, now I'm going to apply the time shift. And I have, this is equal to one half of what? Of e to the minus j omega tau times the Fourier transform of the window. And all of this has to be computed at omega minus omega naught. Plus, here I have the same things, one half e to the minus j omega tau. W of omega computed at omega plus omega naught. And uh, it's very nice, I mean, we got a generic expression of uh, the Fourier transform, of the short time Fourier transform, in terms of, uh, you know, the Fourier transform of the window. And that's what, uh, that's very nice. So what we found, we found that the original Fourier transform, the, the short time Fourier transform, this, is equal to uh, is equal to all of this. So we have that short time Fourier transform of uh, cosine of omega t is equal to what? Excess of omega tau equal to one half. I have to apply omega, become omega, omega minus omega naught, e to the minus j omega minus omega naught tau, w omega minus omega naught, plus one half e to the minus j omega plus omega naught tau, w of omega plus omega naught. That's very nice. So this is the short time Fourier transform. Uh, of course, now the the um, uh, which is written in uh, in general form. Actually, we, we can also apply uh, you know the any type of window. Okay, it doesn't have to be necessarily rectangular. Now, if uh, as we decided at the beginning, uh, w w t is basically the, the rectangular function, is the box function. Uh, then uh, we know that uh, in time we have this uh, behavior. And uh, the correspondent Fourier transform is basically, you know, you can look at the, my, uh, at my preview, um, at the video on, uh, you can look at the video on the Fourier transform of a box signal. It's going to be equal to Ts times the sync function. Omega Ts divided by 2 divided omega Ts divided by 2. And uh, this is uh, equal to, you know, if we plot it in the omega domain, this is equal to, you know, it's going to be a function that is going to be omega s periodic. No, I mean, no, the zeros are all at uh, omega s, omega s, omega s, minus omega s, minus 2 omega s, minus 3 omega s, and uh, the amplitude will be Ts.
and this is the is the um, is the window is the sync function. So the zeros are at the at the location omega n equal uh, n omega sub s, where omega sub s you know, is equal to two pi over t s. And 